Good morning. Just woke up. It's 6 a.m. and it's raining quite heavy outside and it has been for most of the night. So, uh, yeah, going to be a treacherous bike course today. It is race morning and I don't know if you can see out there, it's raining. It's been raining pretty heavy all night, which is going to make the bike course quite treacherous for me. Um, yeah, and I'm going to really have to lay on the um, antihistamine cream afterwards to prevent uh, any um, skin infections from starting because I will be in a wet leg for three or four hours. Uh, yeah, all quite tricky stuff that I hadn't really factored in. However, I don't care how slow I am. I just need to get to the end and do it safely. We are off. On the way to transition. Oh, look, it's packed. Oh, I just need the rain to not be too hard. Please. See you on the other side. Para in this race. So I'm expecting today a whole heck of a lot of... Wow, you're so inspirational. But I suppose that comes with the territory. Hello, hello. This is the Oxman Aquabike race report. For those of you who prefer to see it. This medal has been a long time coming and it's probably my most, my proudest because of the journey I've been to, through to get to this finish line. Um, in 2019, a year after my knee replacement on my right leg, I intended to do this race as a comeback race. Now I'd started, when I was training for it, I'd started to have issues with my left foot. They hadn't yet figured out what that issue was. Um, and we were still early in the game, but anyway, the pain was stopping me from cycling. And when I came to do the race, I had a mini freak out in the, in the lake during the swim, which is not like me at all because I have no issues with swimming. I almost had to be pulled out. I managed to pull myself together, got out on the bike, and then the pain was too much. I couldn't cope, and I had to actually pull out of the race and didn't finish. And it was the first time I'd ever recorded a DNF in all of the years I've been doing triathlon. Um, so it didn't sit well with me at all. And then eight, ten months later, I ended up losing that left leg. So it was sort of unfinished business for me, the, the Oxman. And um, I intended to come back and actually finish the godforsaken race. So when I thought it was probably feasible, I contacted the race organisers because it's really not a very para-friendly event due to the, where it's held, the type of terrain and the, and the amount of junctions on the bike course. It's not to do anything to do with the organisers. It's just, you know, where it actually takes place. And so um, took us a little bit of to and froing, and we eventually, he eventually agreed to let me do it. Um, I told him what I needed from them and that I would provide my own handler, blah, blah, blah. So I had lined myself up a handler and then that all fell through quite close to the race and I ended up having to ask my uh, cupcake tri club people if there's anybody that was local to here that would do the handler job. Um, the lovely Alice volunteered and I had never met Alice before and she was coming down on the morning of the race and that's when we were going to do our little briefing beforehand. Now bear in mind I've not done a multi-sport race, I've not needed a handler in a multi-sport race before so therefore what do you need? I don't know what I need. So we're sort of figuring it out together and um, anyway Alice comes down, I've got the transition um, laid out, they've um, given me a separate rack um, just for me and I'm I'm the only para because obviously I said this is not a para friendly race really uh, but we'd worked out how to make it friendly for me and um, we had it all sorted out I thought. The terrain between transitions and the swim and the bike mount was such that I wouldn't be able to negotiate it on crutches and one leg like I normally would so I am um, we had to use the running blade and I went down to the start line with the running blade and the crutches and left them both with Alice and off we went on the swim. Now the swim this time round was no problem at all. 
I kept well out of the way. I didn't know how I was going to fare against this group of swimmers. It's been like nearly 10 years since I was last in a race. Um, but I'm experienced enough and I can sight and I can swim in straight lines, even though I might be slower than I used to be. So I was swimming in effectively, effectively in straight lines around the boys and all that sort of thing, where some of the people in, in, that were the back markers in the swim were obviously inexperienced in, in uh, multi-sport racing. So they were weaving backwards and forwards, sometimes stopping for um, breaststroke. And anyway, I managed to get past some of these people. Uh, took a good line round the, the turn boys and was catching the back of the swim pack gradually as we went through um, we turn to go to what swim towards the bank now I had no idea because I've not exited the, the lake in this position what the bank was like but it was quite steep and it's stony underwater so once my hands reach the floor I crawl up until I'm out of water on hands and knees and then Alice is on the shoreline and I told her to get down on one knee. Well, what? I didn't tell her which, which direction to face. Anyway, we figured it out. A marshal came along and gave us a hand too. Up I get onto my foot, blade, two crutches and Alice and off we go. We have to get down a stop bank, which was relatively steep. Now, I'd been up and down it with the blade and crutches before and I wasn't worried. But when there's been a few swimmers come through and the swimmers are actually running through transition, a few of them had gone flying and the race organisers were worried that I'd fall. Um, see me? I'm not in any rush. I want to get through with all my body parts intact and have no further injuries. So we had no problem with the stop bank, got to transition and I've not done transitions as a para before. So it wasn't very effective or very slim, uh, um, sleek or, you know, trim or anything. It, I think six odd minutes or something. Anyway, we got through it. Um, Alice is pushing the bike and I'm on the peg leg and the crutches over to the mountain line. And then we do a swap and off I went. Now it's been persistently raining all morning and all of the night before. So I was concerned about the many junctions that I might have to stop at, some of which were left turns, but um, hedgerows were blocking the view and things like that. And stopping and starting was quite tricky. I can do it, but I, I need to think about it a long way in advance. And I have to start with my uh, prosthetic clipped in, so I don't have as much power. So starting is quite slow for me. Anyway, that was my concern and the wet. I've kind of avoided the wet, but um, yeah. Anyway, it's persistently raining. I've, I've accidentally brought the right kit and I've got an extra jacket on and off we go. Now I'm just mooching along at a, what I know is an okay pace. I don't want to aggravate the leg. I don't want to demand too much of it because I get then pain and I can't go any further and I have to stop. So we're mooching along at a pace that's acceptable for me. I don't use the uh, battery power on assist on the bike unless I need it. So I'm not like fizzing along at the top, uh, in the top gear sort of thing. I, d I do it at a, a respectable, reasonable pace and just use it to assist the, the assist as I need it. So I haven't got very far into the bike course when the front pack of the full oxmen are coming past me again um, on their second lap, flying past. And of course, they, um, I'm, I'm the token para and oh my God, you're wow, wow, and all this sort of thing. I knew that would happen. Um, anyway, it was really nice of them all to acknowledge me as I went past. And we get out onto the back of the course. We've negotiated cost and all the lefts and rights and blah, de blah. And we're out onto the back of the course and start to pick up some of the these cyclists in front of me. And when the first one came along, I thought, oh, I feel actually feel quite bad. Because like if I was the cyclist that was being passed by with, with a person with one leg, they'd be like, oh, for God's sake, I, you know. Anyway, each time I passed someone, I turned the battery power off completely because I wanted the, the pass to actually be me. And uh, yeah, so I was catching them at a relatively good pace you know like every i'd get one every little wee while and i think i must have passed maybe five or six by the time i got to the end of the bike course anyway the first two i caught um took me a long time to catch them i mustn't have been going too much faster than them and then shortly after that um on a downhill i must have flicked the bike into the wrong gear at the wrong time or something or other and the chain jumps off and i'm thinking oh for god's sake and there was so i free wheeled until the hill ran out and then i had to get off and put the chain back on. It was jammed between the chain ring and the bike. And I had black all over my hands by the time I'd got the chain back on. I'm thinking, oh, for God's sake, I don't want to cover my bike in oil. So I, and I remember I'm standing on the bike, peg leg. So 
you know, we, we can't do anything. I can't bend my knee, otherwise I fall over with that bike peg leg. So I leaned the bike over as far as I could reach and then dropped it onto the ground. It was on grass, so it was fine. So that I could like lean down and wipe my hands on the grass. At that point, the two cyclists had passed came past just as I'm dropping the bike on the grass and I suppose it must have looked like I was having a fit and throwing it down or something. Anyway, one of them says, um, are you okay? And I said, yep, yep, chain just came off. Are you sure? And I said, yep, yep, just put the bike down to wipe my hands on the grass. And anyway, off I go again. And sorry to those two cyclists because they got passed by a person with one leg twice, not once. Anyway, um, we carry on through very low cloud some of the landmarks that i had remembered like looking for hills in the distance and things were you couldn't see them all the hills were in the all, all under cloud things like that i said hello and thanks to every single marshal i went past because it was a grim day to be a marshal and um we're coming into the back end of oxford again and i'm looking at my watch not too far off of the pace i told alice that i would be at despite having to stop to put the chain back on and I'm still feeling quite good. So we come into the back end of Oxford and down the last little bit of the road. I'm still sort of picking off cyclists every little sort of wee while. Um, and there's still full Oxman cyclists motoring past me like I'm standing still. And when I'm coming down to the bike dismount, I knew roughly where it was. And I was looking for a red sign. And the marshal that was waving a flag was standing in front of the red sign which wasn't too helpful. Anyway, I saw Alice, I saw her crutches. She stuck her hat, arm out with the crutches and I knew that must have been where I had to stop. Um, and, I st and I've got to look round because I stop and it takes me a long time to get off, whereas most people do a flying dismount. So I make sure I'm not like s sending anyone behind me into a, a tailspin. And off I get and we hoppity crutch over the way to transition. Now I hadn't decided whether I would actually do the walk to the finish line or not until the day. I decided I would, um, I, I felt, I reckoned I would decide on the day at the time. So I got to transition and said to Alice, right, you wanna walk this 1K back round with me to the finish? And she said, yeah. Now, honestly, that 1K to the finish was the hardest bloody part of the race, totally. I'm glad that it didn't, my time didn't count on that because the time finished for me when I crossed the, the line into transition. So we moved around, had to stop and start and stand and start and stand and start. We had a little chat on the way about um, our um, triathlon backgrounds and things like that. And then a, couple, a cyclist came that I had passed, come past me. She's now onto the run. She's doing the mini Oxman triathlon. And she saw me and she said, oh, yeah, do you know, you, you, you're the one that passed me. You were like, motored past me really fast. And I was thinking, oh, bloody hell. And I said, do you want me to let you into a little secret? I've actually got an e-bike. They let me use an e-bike. So... I wasn't in full full tilt top gear, but I did have a little bit of assistance, so don't feel too bad. And she said, oh my God, that means I now have to carry on and actually finish. Yes, you do. And off she went to do her little run. I don't, can't even remember how, how far it was. Anyway, that um, that's the only person that actually made a comment. A lot of people were like, wow, you're doing so well because I'm now walking on a running blade. The reason I was walking on it is because I haven't run very far. I'm on an old socket. They put it back on last week because of my blisters and um, the running blade because of the rain, then my hydraulic ankle didn't get wet and I didn't have to strip it and clean it. So we finally get around to the finish line and uh, one of the other copies is standing close to the finish line, cheering me in. And Alice went round the other side of the fences and did a little video of me coming across the finish line. And I found some energy in me to jog across the finish line. And that was pretty neat. Now, I have to say, I'm really, really, really proud of this because this, the journey that took me to this start line, there were more obstacles in this than anybody could have possibly imagined. And it is only just over two years since um, they amputated my leg. So I'm really proud of the fact that I did not let it beat me, that I came back and that I, uh, you know, faced all those demons and I sorted it all out and got to the end of the race. Not only that, but it's my first race proper as a multi-sport race as a para triathlete. And it's the first race that I failed to finish and only actually race that I failed to finish on two feet, but I managed to finish it on one. So I'm feeling really bloody proud of myself.